good afternoon to each and every one of you or good morning whenever you're able to watch this praise god that we've got this way of being able to come come together in a way that it can be spread across shoot all over the world so praise god for that god is god is on the move the devil may be on the run but god's on the move so praise god for the the sunday we had thank god uh i've I'm recording this ahead of time due to certain things that I've got to do for work, but God is good and and is able for us to be able to get this word out this way. So uh, before we go into the message, let's just let's just praise God for what He's done for each and every one of us in in you and your life. Whatever He had, you know, He was able to wake up again another morning. He was able to get through the middle of the week. Let's just praise Him for the little things and watch them grow to the big things so and keep all of our uh offer ones mentioned in in our our churches and our our, the prayer chains that are coming out keep all of them lifted up and your lost loved ones praise god he i'm telling you he's on he's on the move i mean if you cannot cannot feel him when you come into the church service or any church service no matter where you at then seek where God would have you to be because we all need to be in the center of what God has us to be because praise God you'll feel him you'll know he's there and you will know for without a shadow of a doubt when you leave that place if you wasn't ready when you went in you'll be ready when you come out so let's continue to pray for the churches the ministers uh pastor uh brother David said something someday that they just absolutely it, it, it got me and that is let's pray for our pastors and what's weighing on them what's on their mind what is is bothering them because they see things that are coming upon the face of the earth and they're coming against the churches that but don't misunderstand what i'm saying because it's just as what brother doug says the church is not going under the church is going up and God, Jesus, will be exalted in this day. He will be number one, and he will be that top tier. There's no way, if, ends, or buts about it. Because if you read the end of the book, you know what happens. So, praise God. Let us pray for our pastors in this way also. Pray for their families and pray that they're continuing to show us the things that God would have them to Pray for all the ministers all the way across the land. Um, I probably said that already, <laughs> but praise God for them. Let's just uh, pray for our nation too. All the sick and afflicted, the lost and the undone. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise your precious name, God, for your grace, your mercy, Lord God. Lord, you've been such a blessing, Lord God, to us, Father. Lord God, without you, Lord, we wouldn't have the breath in our lungs, God. And we wouldn't be able, Father, just to be able to come and be able to have a free worship, God, unto you, Father. We would still be caught under that law, Lord God. But you sent your only begotten Son, Lord God, that he gave his precious blood, Father. He gave his life for us, Lord God that we may be able to have eternal life. Lord, I thank you, Father, for writing my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord God, that I'd have a place, Lord God, not built with hands, Lord, that is built, Lord God, with you, and Lord God, built by you, Father, thanking you, praising you, God, for these things. Lord God, guide us, Father, and direct us, Father, in this last day and time, Lord. God, anointing each and every minister, Father, each and every pastor, Lord God, touching them, God, in the very most depths, Father, helping them, Lord God, in the, in the things, Lord God, that may be a burden or weighing on them, Lord God. Lift them up and anoint them, Father, and remove these obstacles, Lord God, that your church would go forth, God, in each and every way, God, professing, proclaiming, praising your Lord, Son, Jesus Christ. I praise you and I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, Father. Lord God, for what you're doing in this last day, Father. Help us, Lord God, to make sure that we're focused on you, Father. And Lord God, the derisions, the divisions, Father, that they wouldn't come against us. 
Lord God, that we would be in focus, Lord God, and in key, God, unto you. Lord, guide us and direct us, Father. Touch our lost loved ones, God. Stir them, Lord God. Do just exactly what is needed, Father, that they come unto you, Father. Lord, and I ask you, God, just to touch our church, Father. Lift it up, Father, as we be the men and women, God, that you'd call us to be, Father. The ones that you're in the prayer change, Father. And, Lord God, the ones, Lord God, the ministers, the, the preachers, Lord God, each and every one across the land, God. Guide us and direct us, Father, and touch our nation, God, that we'd come back unto you. And remove me tonight, Father, Lord God, as you would have your way and you would have your will, Father. In the glory and the honor be all unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. So tonight we'll be in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we'll start at verse 16 and going through this chapter here. I'll give you just a second to be able to turn there. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 16. So praise God, uh, <laughs> I was thinking all about this that I just studied through the previous week that that um, when Brother Doug was uh, preaching on Sunday, I thought every bit of it. I thought, man, he is, he just about took every bit of it. I don't know what I'm going to do next for Wednesday, but praise God, He is good. So I'm going to continue what God put in my heart and allowed me to because it's going to go hand in hand. So in verse 16, we're going to start here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And Paul is telling us about, excuse me, Paul is telling us about the church. And about our church today, you know, the, the, like I said, the devil may be uh, on the run, but God's on the move. God's got, I mean, it's just like chess. God has got his counter offer each time or his counter move each time that devil tries to make a move. God has got his children. Just as he done the same thing in the wilderness for Israel. Just as exactly how he destroyed those Egyptians. God has got his children in this last day. Don't think anything and don't bat an eye to think twice about that. Because God has got this for number one. But as we're going to go on and go through this, know number one that I love each and every one of you, no matter if you're watching this or not, you know, I love you, and that's why I'm I'm telling you these things. And I'm not saying that our church is this right now, because I do not believe it is. But I'm telling you that this is a way that the devil's trying to move, and I, you can see it right now that he's trying to move and he's trying to do things that are in the church. So just take heed. In verse 16, But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. So if any of them want to be the ones that uh, stir the pot, the ones that wants to bring up an argument, there's no place for them in there. That's not that's not a place for it in the church. In verse 17, Now, in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. So like I said, I don't, right now, you, you know, we are so blessed to have the church we have. Each and every one, please do not misunderstand what I'm saying, and don't put words in my mouth, because you're hearing it straight. Like as Brother Doug said, um, I don't, this is not our church now, but this is the way that the devil is trying to use and trying to work in this last day and time. And he's trying to use just as his pastor was showing and telling us on Sunday morning. He's trying to do these things. He's working his way through there. But this is the ways that we've got to block off. These are the ways that we've got to give more faith unto God. These are the ways that we've got to make sure our faith is in Jesus Christ. Because if it's not, then we have faith in sinking sand. And it's not going to stand. It's just like a house that is built on a rock or it's like a house that's built on the sand. 
the house that's built on a rock is, has his faith in Jesus Christ. When the water comes through, this right around the rock, when the water comes through on the sand, it digs the foundation out of the house. Don't allow that. Don't allow our foundation to be shaken. Let us put our faith in Jesus Christ. Because the devil is out just to divide, to destroy, and to put that divisions among us. Verse 19. For there must be also hearsays among you, that they which are approved may be manifest among you. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Now notice how it says it right here. And I can't help but... But think of it in this way. And I, I, I realize you read Matthew Henry commentary and things such as that. It'll, it'll show you everything direct. But when, it's, when it says eat the Lord's Supper. When you have communion as we call it. It is partaking for us to be able to. And it'll, it'll, it's going to tell us this on down the, down the road here. But it, you, are, you are examining yourself. And you are taking Jesus' blood and his body and doing it in remembrance of knowing that you need to look into yourself and ask truly for the forgiveness to make sure that you are in line and in straight with God. That you have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That your life is pointing in the correct direction. Let's go on before I... Knock the whole thing out in five sentences here. <laughs> For in eating, every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and the other is drunken. So just eating it, it it's not going to do you any good. It, it's not going to do anyone any good for this. Just to be able to say, okay, I've I, I done it. I'm done for the year per se and I'm going to head on out and go do my thing and I'll be back next year to do the same thing. It's not how it works. Verse 22. What have ye not houses to eat and to drink in or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he, he was betrayed, took bread. Now I'm going to stop right here real quick. And if I keep stopping, I'm going to make this lengthy, so I'm trying to narrow it on down. I realize what they're saying here uh, about taking it away from the poor and taking away certain things. But think of it this way. If we go into church, we're not coming expecting. And, and, and say, for instance, if you go, go into church and you're not, you're not expecting God to move. Brother Doug calls altar call and God says, you need to go. You need to get renewed. But you're fighting him the whole way going to that altar. You are going the the whole way that you're you're on the negative side of things, thinking, well this I don't need any of this. There's no reason for me to be here. I don't wanna I don't wanna do this. You're taking it away from other people's plate. One bad apple. And before I say any more like I said, I love you. I, I am not telling you this out of me because the Lord knows I've done it before. The Lord knows I've been in a bad mood. Something happened before or somebody pulled out in front of you and you still got a little road rage before you get there. But with all jokes aside, when we come in to church, when we come in to communion, no matter what it is, we have to have that mind focus set that God's going to move. Jesus is going to work. And he is my Savior. And my faith is completely in him. And when you put your faith completely in him, and when you walk through that door, that's when 
you grab the three and one. That's when you know the Holy Ghost is there. His Spirit is forever for real from corner to corner. And when you know His Spirit's real, that sparks a flame. And that kindles a flame. As long as you've got coals, and as long as you've got the people that are ready to serve God, then your fire will burn bright. Because there's enough oxygen out here that God will provide if we, ourselves, keep the fuel in the fire. So what I'm trying to tell you is, is that if you got the mully grubs, don't drag that lip all the way to the altar. Say, Lord, I'm ready. I want you to move in my life. If I've got the mully grubs, then that's fine. Every one of us get it. But when you go to the altar, don't go to the altar trying to drag other people down. And don't go to, and I'm not saying our church does this. I'm telling you this because it's coming. I'm telling you because the devil is doing everything he can to create a division. And what he can use as division to tear the church up or to do anything such as that, which he's not going to, because if we put our focus in Jesus Christ, he will never prevail against the church. But I'm telling you, he's going to try these things. And when he does, keep on your toes because you need to keep our, our faith in Jesus Christ. I need to keep my faith in Jesus Christ. No matter who it is, if we follow, follow his word and keep his word, we won't have anything to worry about. So keep the fire kindled and make sure there's always coals. Because we can grow the fire as one another, to be able to come into the house of God. That's why it's so important we assemble. That's why it was so great at Sunday. That's why you felt the Lord Jesus Christ has come in and that Holy Ghost wrap us up. Praise God, there ain't nothing, nothing no better about it. And if you do not know what I'm talking about and you do not understand, you need to be saved by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave His life for you. And Jesus Christ shed his last drop of blood because when they pierced his side, come forth blood and water. That was when life was separated. That is how to get saved through Jesus Christ. You've got to believe and have faith. Not here. Right in that heart, too. you got to have a profession and a possession. You've got to have that stirring, that churning, saying, I've got to get something. And you don't have to worry about thinking, well, I, I want the next bigger drug. I want the next bigger thing. Because he will fill all those voids. Let's go to verse 23. I'll be honest with you. I don't even remember where we stopped at. So. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supplied, saying, or supped, I'm sorry, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye, sh ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Where, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, unworthily shall be guilty of the blood and the blood of the Lord. That's why I'm saying if you are not if you're not saved and born again and you partake unworthily of his communion it's not going to do you any good it's going to do you more harm than good but let man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup let's look at ourselves and not these and not others you know let's I've, I've, I've been so guilty you know sometimes at work I'm thinking man these people just such and such and such and such are doing that. You, you look at them differently. Let's, let's not. Because their problems probably are not your problems. 
but you have problems too, and so do they. That goes right straight back to the beam and the moat. You know, you can't pull the beam unless you get the moat out of your own. So praise God, we've got to look at ourselves and make sure we are clean. Verse 29, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. So praise God, He's still in the correction factor. He corrects us. He looks at us. We, If we will allow Him to judge us, Right now, down here, because there's one day that you will be and you will face the throne room of judgment, the white throne of judgment, that you will not be able to ask for forgiveness at that point. At that point, if you are standing there, you don't have that luxury. There's nothing else to do other than to take your judgment. So down here, we've got to make sure that we've got that all out of the way, that we have the blood of Jesus Christ and it is covering us and covering our sins. Wherefore, my brethren, ye come together, or uh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Um, but when, in verse 32, but when we are judged that we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. You don't want to be there. I know I just read that, but you don't want to be there. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Aren't you ready? Aren't you ready for Jesus Christ to set it in order? Are you truly ready? Whoever is listening, I don't know why this is on so bad, but are you truly ready when that trumpet sounds and Jesus Christ steps out on the clouds of glory? Are you truly ready? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to leave this world? Are you holding on to some of the things that are of this world? I'm not I'm not saying we need to we need to get down real. That's that's why it's been so hard on every minister and every everyone that teaches his word. The lost and undone. That's why it's so real. Because you got loved ones out there that are not not ready for that that are not ready to take their flight. And their flight may not be too much of a flight. Let us pray for these people. But let us remember that we don't do judgment upon these people. We are only here to be able to relay the word of God. We're only here to to give the love of God. And I'm not saying that we have to go by. Love is not always... Pat this one on the back. He's doing just fine. Love is the truth. Even if it does hurt. Even if it stings. And even if it's not the things that we want to hear. Love is the actual truth that comes from the Word of God. But remember, this devil is going to try to come in each and every way he can. We're seeing things set up that we've never seen before. And you're, you're, you're seeing things happen that you've never seen before. So that tells you right there, we're close. Very, very close. I'm not going to tear it anymore. I know I'm getting over the right there at the 25-minute mark. So I love each and every one of you. Let us pray real quick before we get off of here and praise God for what He's going to do because He will keep you. We're, we're His children. 
and look what he done for the ones that that uh, uh, escaped from Egypt. Look at what he done for them. Imagine what he can do for us. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise your precious name, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord God, for your guidance, God, your directance, Father. But more importantly, God, for love, Lord. Lord God, your love is not like this world's love. Lord God, the world's love, God, would, would take us and bring us down and, and tell each and every one of us that we're just fine, Lord God, but we may be headed, Father, for hell. But God, your love is truth. It's everlasting, and it is your word, Lord God, that we stand on as a foundation and a pillar, God. Father, for our help, God, and for you, Lord God. Lord, we praise you and we thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do, Father. Set forth, Father, things, God, of this week, Father, and anoint our past, God, in each and every way. Lord God, that we take those past, Lord. God, as we look, God, unto you, they may be narrow and they may be so much that you got to slide through sometimes, Lord. But, Father, help us, Lord God, to make sure that we stick on those paths. And, Lord God, that you touch our loved ones, God. Stir each and every one of them. Lord God, with the Holy Ghost, Father, that they would come unto you. If they do not know you, Father, then they are lost and done. Father, I pray, God, that you do exactly what is needed, Father, to bring them, God, into the fold, Lord. That they would have their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord, guide us, Father. Direct us, God, once more, Father. And touch each and every one of us, Lord God, that we all, Lord God, would have that burning feeling, Lord God, to have more, God, of your word. Lord God, that we would desire, Lord God, waiting there at the church doors, Father, for the key to turn the lock and the door to open, Lord. Father, help us, God, to be that that church, Lord, Father, that's on fire for you and has a burning, Lord, Father, for you. Guide us and direct us, Father. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your precious blood for me and saving my soul. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. Love each and every one of you. Pray you have a very, very blessed week.